Good morning, good afternoon everyone, and welcome to episode 3 of this series on how to create a Web 3D Infinite Runner game. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to have our game instance completely manage the initialization of the 3D scene, and we'll see how to create a basic spaceship model using the 3.js utilities. Are you ready? Then let's dive in! So last time we worked on our game logic and we prepared the skeleton of our game class. So in this episode, we're going to increase the decoupling between the game code and the main routine even more, and we'll see how to use 3.js geometry utilities to model our little spaceship. If we take back our main.js script, we see that for now it contains three parts. First, we create the basic 3.js objects, so that's the scene, the camera, and the renderer, and we add the auto-generated HTML canvas to our DOM. Then we make our 3D scene, um, so for now we're just creating uh, our green cube from a geometry and a material, and we add it to the scene and we place our camera. And finally, we define our animate loop function, and we call it once to start the auto-looping. But as we said in the previous tutorial, what we want to do is make the main routine agnostic of all the details about the 3D scene, so that um, we can update our game logic as much as we want, and we don't have to worry about the main script. So we want to extract the middle chunk from this, um, the one that creates the contents of the 3D scene, and we want to move it to the game class. Remember last time we created our constructor and the initialize scene method? Um, so this will be the ones that we're going to populate gradually to move this logic. To begin with, um, we're going to reproduce the exact same scene, uh, so the one with our rotating green cube, but we'll make sure that we have all of this handled by the game instance. So there are two objects that we need to pass to our game instance so it can recreate the scene, the scene itself, and the camera. So let's add these as input parameters in our game.js file in the constructor. Then we'll pass them to the initialize scene method. And then back in our main.js script, we can take this bit of code and copy it into our game class. So now we can just replace this um, by a single line where we create our game instance and we pass it the scene and the camera. The problem is that, for now, uh, the cube variable doesn't exist anymore, so the animate loop will crash when it tries to update its rotation. What we'll do is also make the game instance take care of rotating the cube. So let's take those two lines and move them to the update method of our game class. We'll simply replace uh, the cube variable by a this.cube variable, so that it's an instance variable and we can access it from every method in our class. So don't forget to change it um, in the initialize scene too. And finally, in the main.js script, instead of updating the cube directly, uh, we'll just call the update method of our game instance. Now, if you save this, you'll get the exact same 3D scene as before, but now everything is done inside of the game class, which is way better. With that said, it's finally time to actually start modeling our spaceship for hyperspeed. So as you can see on this image, uh, my spaceship model is composed of seven parts. First, you have the ship body, and uh, that's a tetrahedron, so it's like a pyramid. And then you have the reactors. Each reactor is composed of two cylinders. The first one is the socket of the reactor, and the second one is the energy, so the light of the reactor. Uh, this gives us two times three equals six objects, plus the ship body, so that's seven objects in total. Um, so let's go back to our game.js script and scroll down to our initialize scene method. Um, we we'll want to replace the green cube that we're creating for now with our spaceship inside um, this function. So let's start with the ship body. To create this mesh, we'll use some geometry utilities of 3.js. We'll want to use the tetrahedron geometry. As you can see, it has a float um, radius parameter 
that lets us set the size of the geometry. But there is a little optimization trick that we can use, and that's to use buffer geometries instead of geometries. Basically, buffer geometries are a specific type of geometry that contains info about uh, vertex positions, face indices, normals, and so on. Uh, so all of this data can be passed to the GPU much quicker. And a buffer geometry is much more efficient than its basic geometry equivalent, uh, because all of the data is already ready to be read. When you work with custom geometry and you build your shape by hand, buffer geometries can be a bit harder to use as a developer, but here we're just using um, basic primitives, so they're clearly the better choice. So instead of using tetrahedron geometry, let's switch to tetrahedron buffer geometry and pass in our radius parameter. So I'll choose um, 0.4. This is something that I've found beforehand. Uh, of course, depending on the look that you want for your spaceship, you should tweak this. So now we can just define a basic material with a light grey colour. And this gives us our shape body mesh. The thing is that rather than adding this shape body directly into the scene, we're actually going to create a virtual anchor for the seven parts of our ship. So the ship will not uh, really be a 3D object, but a 3D group. Uh, it will be a collection of several children that are all packed together in this specific sub-hierarchy in our scene. And this will allow us to transform these seven objects as if they were one. So we'll be able to easily translate, rotate or scale the entire ship all at once. Also, because we want to access our ship group inside other methods of our instance, let's make it an instance variable. So let's create a little this.ship variable, that is a 3.group. And now we can add our ship body to this sub hierarchy using dot add as usual, but on the ship variable. And of course we want to add the group itself, so the ship, to the scene. We'll just leave the camera as is for the moment. But before we save, however, uh, there's something that we need to change, and that's our update method. Remember that we were modifying the rotation of our cube in this function, uh, but since the cube doesn't exist anymore, this will cause some null references. So let's just get rid of that. And now we can save, and we see that we have a little object in our scene. So that's our shape body. The problem is that it's not properly rotated. Um, we want to see it from the rear. So this means we have to rotate it 45 degrees around the x and y axis. So we can do that with the dot rotate x and dot rotate y functions. But be careful because the angles you give here uh, have to be converted to radians. So we just multiply by pi and divide by 180 to get the equivalent in radians. And now we see that our ship is properly rotated. The next thing we want to do is move and rotate the camera a bit so that it's closer to the object and we see the terrain and the ship from above. Once again, we'll use the rotate x method on our camera with an angle of minus 20 degrees. And we'll set the camera position with a little offset on the y axis, so that's the vertical axis, to something like um, 1.5. Okay, so we have a nice rear view of our ship body now, and it's time to add the reactors. So another important thing about geometries is that if several objects in your scene have the exact same shape, uh, you can actually reuse the same geometry variable when you create each mesh. This will improve memory management and it will avoid redundancy. Uh, and similarly, we can actually do the same for materials. So let's define two variables here the reactor socket geometry and the reactor socket material. The geometry will use the cylinder buffer geometry with some custom parameters. And the material will be a basic material with a medium grey colour. Now we can use those two variables to create three meshes, uh, the three reactor sockets of our ship, and we'll add them to the ship group that we created before. But if you save this, you won't see anything, because for now, the sockets are actually inside the ship body. They are all at the origin point. So let's set the position and rotation. And 
now we can see our three reactor sockets behind the ship. For the lights, it's pretty similar. Uh, we simply need to create another cylinder geometry that is a bit smaller so that it looks like it's um, inside and a basic light blue material. So now again, we can create the objects, add them to the ship and set their positions and rotations. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, we now have our little spaceship that is ready to go and fly on a grid. So today we've managed to transfer all of our 3D scene initialization logic into the game class and we've explored 3.js geometry and buffer geometry tools to create our spaceship model. Next time we'll see how to add an infinite grid to our scene and animate it so that it feels like we're moving forward indefinitely. We'll talk a bit about shaders and we'll see how they can help you optimize lots of visual effects in your games. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you soon for the rest of this series.